Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis are characterized by periods of symptomatic flare which are hard to predict. Uncontrolled inflammation frequently persists, even in the absence of clinical symptoms, and results in irreversible bowel damage. Prolonged deep remission, where both symptoms and gut inflammation are absent, is therefore a central long-term goal of therapy. Adequate disease monitoring is key in achieving this. Unfortunately, the disease course of IBD varies across patients, and, despite much research effort, we have little robust and consistent method for prediction. What we do know is that typically a patient with IBD will go through periods of symptomatic flare and remission. If we treat the symptoms only, the symptoms may subside and the inflammatory markers may reduce, but the underlying inflammation can still be present. Whilst it is usual for people with active gut inflammation to have multiple symptoms, it is increasingly apparent that there is, all too often, a disconnect between gut inflammation and symptoms. An individual can be asymptomatic and have active inflammation, or symptomatic with no gut inflammation. The good news is that inflammation can be determined by assessing clinical symptoms, non-invasive markers of inflammation, cross-sectional imaging, or endoscopy. The STRIDE initiative has defined recommendations for selecting and assessing treatment targets in IBD. When it comes to monitoring markers of gut inflammation, CRP is the most accurate blood marker. However, it is not gut-specific and will be elevated with an infection or inflammation elsewhere in the body. Calprotectin is the main cytoplasmic protein in neutrophils. Measured in a stool sample, it provides a highly accurate measure of gut inflammation and is more sensitive than CRP. Followed over time, the trends in faecal calprotectin offer a very powerful tool to monitor disease activity. The combined measurement of CRP and calprotectin may accurately predict relapses in patients with Crohn's disease, even ahead of a symptomatic flare. And of course, the most direct way of assessing mucosal inflammation is by endoscopy or cross-sectional imaging. In terms of when to monitor, there are four key times we need to pay attention to. When a patient first comes to us, we need to do a full assessment to determine what stage of disease they are at. During a flare, we need to confirm it is indeed a flare related to IBD and assess its severity. Once we have initiated or changed a treatment, we need to check whether a patient has responded or not. We also need to closely monitor any adverse events. All these help us decide whether treatment should be continued, adjusted or changed. Lastly, when a patient is in remission, we should continue to monitor them to make sure that they stay that way. In summary, IBD is a group of progressive diseases. As clinicians, we need to actively and tightly monitor our patients to act within the window of opportunity to treat beyond symptoms and thus prevent disease progression.